Happy Motoring comes alongside is just to head back. Down on the rail and holding third is Tijuana. Taxi, here comes Sun Sam. Wheeling three wide and going right up to join him. Sun Sam on the far outside. Now well, it's Bob Pandolfo. It's Monday, November 27, 2023. And welcome to Power Pace with Pandy. And we're going to have a little, um, just talk a little bit about the races the other night, the Meadowlands and Saturday night. You kind of had the last big races of the year in harness racing. And uh, it was interesting because you had some three-year-olds racing against all the horses. I noticed some people said, well, you know, three-year-olds, you know, can't beat all the horses. It really depends on the situation. You know, you had some three-year-olds who raced very well. Um, Twin B, Joe Fresh, this filly, took on the open mares in the uh, FanDuel Championship race. And, uh, you know, she beat him pretty easily. 25 flat last quarter. Um, and, you know, the betters were pretty smart here, too, because I thought for sure Max Contract, who had just won the Breeders' Crown, would be the favorite. And, you know, they, they bet Twin B, Joe Fresh down. They wanted the now horse. And, you know, so there's, there's an example of a three-year-old beating all the horses, and she did it pretty easily. Um, in the um, FanDuel Championship Open Mare Trot, Bond, a three-year-old trotter, uh, raced very well against uh, Jiggy Jog. You know, both from the same barn here, as you can see. Jiggy Jog, you know, is a tremendous trotting mare. And, um, you know, but Bond uh, always races well. Uh, really nice tr uh, trotter. Um, and, uh, you know, I think... I think she, you know, I don't know if she's kind of come back next year. I would assume she is, but you know, she she's just always tough, she's a fast horse, fast trotter. So then, of course, we got down to um, the uh, uh, these are all good races, by the way. Here's the Governor's Cup final. Uh, this was a really good race, you know, wide open race. I, I like uh, Lou Vuitton here, it got used pretty hard. Um, you know, Captain Luke got a nice trip. Uh, congratulations to Todd McCarthy and Tony Lagner and the owners. Um, Swanstead again had a really good night. He won, you know, here he goes, here's his stable winning again. I mean, his, nobody trains trotters any better, that's for sure. I mean, Swanstead is pretty amazing. But now we get down to the FanDuel Championship, the open pace, which a lot of people are looking forward to. And here you had the three-year-old champ confederate, who's, I think, probably going to win Horse of the Year. And, you know, he was going against the older horses for the first time and unfortunately it'll be the last time too because confederate's retiring um now i didn't i didn't like confederate here and i really like this horse, you know confederate i you, I re, you might remember that after the um north american cup when he missed by a nose he came his last half with 52 and one and i said this was going to win the meadowlands pace i made a video about it and you know if, if you look at his um his career you know, this horse, all right, so he came into this race, he had three losses, but his first start as a two-year-old, they really weren't trying, and I think he finished third in that race, and, but he raced well, and then his, and then, then he lost in his last race as a two-year-old when he, he just missed with a powerful effort in the um, Breeders' Crown, two-year-old, and he was just too far back. Then this year, his only loss coming into this race was in the um, North American Cup, where he, when he came that last, 52 and one last half, and he missed to It's My Show. And, you know, again, he was, you know, he was powerful in that race. He was definitely the best horse in the race. It's just that he was too far back. Um, now, so what happens here, though, you know, the reason why I didn't pick him, and I know a lot of other people, you know, knew, they look, this is not going to be a walk in the park. I mean, he basically faced one really, really, you know, fast horse during the course of the year. It's my show. Who beat him in the North American Cup? It's my show. You know, won the, you know, the little brown jug. And, you know, the rest of these horses, Seven Colors and Christchurch and, you know, uh, Stockade Hanover or Cannibal. You know, these are nice, you know, nice horses. But they're not the kind of horses he's facing here. I mean, and that that's the thing. So... Can three-year-olds beat older horses? Absolutely, especially later in the year like this. I mean, it's happened plenty of times. But the thing is, this was a big step up in class. I mean, you know, you're talking about horses here. I mean, look at this horse, Tattoo Artist. He's retiring now. He's a six-year-old. This was his last race on Saturday night. I mean, he had 40 wins in 95 career starts. You know, look at, I mean, he was just ripping off one win after another this year. 
he beat you know by the missile really tough he beat Aliwa you know very fast horse I mean these are really fast horses um, by the missile who won the Breeders Crown uh, you know who should park on October 28th I mean this horse you know 11 for 15 coming into this race 25 for 32 lifetime uh, I mean really you know rugged four-year-old hopefully he'll race ne again next year well he will probably he's a gelding so that's good very tough horse i think this horse is going to be a really good five-year-old too that you know I, I, I don't see why he wouldn't I mean, and he he's probably going to be even faster next year um overall too all even the horses that weren't the big stars in this race are really nice horses then you come down to alley wag hanover the horse that won i mean he wasn't at his best most of the year, but this is a horse, don't forget, who last year went in 146. The world record is 145 and 4 by, Ali, by um, Bulldog Hanover. You know, and Ali Wag Hanover, you know, raced well against uh, Bulldog Hanover on, on, on some occasions, you know, when he was still racing. So, I mean, you know, this is a horse that any, you know, all these horses I just mentioned, they're all capable of going, of going like, you know, 147. I mean, these are really fast horses. And the thing is, it's not just that they're fast. These are much more, you know, uh, rugged horses than the three-year-olds that uh, Confederate has been facing. You know, I mean, there, there is a difference. I mean, these horses are the type of horses that really try hard, and they, you know, they're battle-tested. You know, and uh, you know, it's that's why you know, the, to me, the best pacing races are always the older horses. You know, and it's a and it's a shame that, you know, they retire these horses young now because you don't get to see these real battles like you used to. You do sometimes. But, you know, years ago when the, when, when the owners didn't retire their horses after a three-year-old season, you used to have some incredible matches with older horses. And, of course, you had a lot of horses, many, many horses, who didn't even become top free-for-all horses or great horses until after their three-year-old season. I mean, many, many, many horses, you know, uh, what a Baron and, uh, you know, Genghis Khan. I mean, and you can go on and on and on. Well, even the horse Bulldog Hanover. I mean, Bulldog Hanover, you know, nobody even heard of him until, you know, he was an older horse. And then he ended up being, you know, one of the fastest horses that ever raced. You know, if they had retired him after his three-year-old season, he, you know, the, he would not have the world record, obviously. He would have stopped racing, you know, but he uh, came into his own at a later stage, which a lot of horses do. So Confederate, you know, he was, you know, he was stepping up. And I, look, I, you know, I don't think he was at his best, though, you know, uh, in this particular race. But it was really, you know, in his whole career, this was by far his worst effort. But it was by far the best field, too. I mean, not even close. You know, I, I, don't, I just wanted to show you something about the, the Trackmaster class ratings. Just to give you an example. Now, these are the, tr the, the class ratings over here, right? Three points is a lot. Like if you see a horse dropping down and dropping three points, that's a lot. That that that's usually the kind of when I see three points, I usually expect that that you know a horse could win off that time of drop. You know, pretty, you know, that could be make a, a significant difference. So here, anyway, here's by the missile in the Breeders' Crown, and you can see that the class rating was a hundred. That was the toughest field he faced according to these ratings. Now, all these other ones were 99, so I mean, but then he's at 100. So now, if you look at Confederate, the toughest class rating he faced was 96. And he was facing some 93s and 95s, and then his last three starts were 96. And of course, he was in the Breeders' Crown then. And then they, they gave it a 96 for the uh, Matron at Dover Downs. That's a four-point difference. That's a lot. In these Trackmaster class ratings, that's a significant difference. So even though the times look like they're on par with the older horses, it's not the same. It's not the same because, you know, if, if first of all, if the horse It's My Show isn't in the race, which, he, which he, you know, he wasn't in a lot of these races, it, these were not, you know, these horses just weren't in Confederate's class. You know, and here he's stepping into a race with 10 really good older horses, and including four horses, uh, I mean three horses, Ali Wag, Hanover, Tattoo, and By the Missile, that are real monsters. I mean, these are top free-for-all horses. Years ago, you know, for those of you who, who are around my age, you remember this, but other people may not, but they used to use classification lettering to classify harness racing horses. 
uh, you know, instead of these non-winners like you have now, it would be like you'd have an A class, B class, C class. But the top class was free for all, FFA. Then it was junior free for all, and then you got into the A classes, and then you went into the Bs. And and of course there were also you know the stakes races for all the horses, and you had also um, uh, open handicap races where the horse that was in the best form or the best horse in the race would get they push him on the outside. It was a handicap race, so like. At Yonkers and Roosevelt, for instance, on the half-mile tracks, they would, they would give the horse post-dates. They'd give them a disadvantage. And they still do that. They still have handicap racing. Um, so, you know, these horses, like Tattoo Artist, by the Missile, and Alley Walk, Hanover, they would be classified FFA, which would be the very top of the sport. Um, you know, and they are, these are the best horses, you know, in racing. Um you know, for all the horses that were in this race, you know, as far as the ones that were still, you know, racing. And so, I mean, it was, it was a significant step up in class. I don't think Confederate, you know, was necessarily at his best, but, you know, some people would say he didn't get a good trip. I mean, it wasn't an easy trip. So, you know, Tim Tietrich, um had to leave with him, basically. You know, I mean, it would have been very tough to, you know, come from behind from post nine. So, you know, he left, he did get a tuck. It doesn't show it. It doesn't look like it here because, and, and they gave him an out, which which they should have. I mean, he was parked like most of the first quarter. He did get a tuck, so he got a little bit of a breather. And then he did what you know he had to do. He went first over. I mean, Tetrick did the best. Tetrick did the best to get him into the race. He went first over into a 27 and three third quarter. You know, I didn't think that was you know asking that much. Uh, but you got to remember, it's 35 degrees. It's actually probably colder than 35. This is a race 11. Probably was back freezing by that time. And, and, you know, that's why, you know, you don't see the blazing fractions and the blazing final times. You know, like 55 and 2 half for these kind of horses isn't that fast. But got to take into consideration it's not, you know, hot and humid like it is during the summer. If they ran this race in July, the, the, you know, they probably would have went like 54 and a half, maybe even faster. The, the drivers, you know, are, are aware that the track is more tiring. You know this time of the year so that's why you see like a 27 and one first quarter the drive it's not like the drivers didn't leave i mean you know i did it my way pressed the early pace confederate left he was wide on the first turn you know alley wag hanover gunned out but they didn't leave as hard as they would under you know ideal conditions because they know their horse is going to get tired it's a lot tiring more tiring when it's cold out you know it's just the way it is they know the race is going to go slower, so they're not going to kill their horse leaving. On a hot, humid night, I mean, you may have had a much more aggressive first quarter. Probably would have. So it may, have, it probably would have been. It could have been even twenty-five and four. So then you have a whole new ball, a whole different ball game. Then you know, um, but uh, you know, like I said, the drivers are aware that the track is more tiring. The track, and the Meadowlands track has been, you know, much more tiring the last uh, month or so than it was during the summer. There's no question about it, which is good. You know, it makes it more exciting. You get more closes winning. Um, but, you know, hey, look, this wasn't the greatest way to end his career. Some people said, oh, they shouldn't have raced him against all the horses. Well, of course they should have. You know, give him a chance. Hey, look, if he won this race, that would have added to, you know, his his, whole, his overall um, uh history of the of the horse but as it is though hey look he's a great three-year-old he's a great three-year-old he's a great colt he's going to go down in history as a great colt unfortunately they're retiring him um will he go down in history as a great horse like when you compare against horses like the great horses like a butter baron i mentioned or you know um you know niatros annihilator and can no he won't you know i mean those horses you know they race more often you know um they raced against all the, you know, well, Nihilator didn't race against all the horses, but he, you know, he raced like 38 times. Um, as far as the older horses, like the Genghis Khans and horse like that, and, and I mentioned before, and uh, Bulldog Hanover, who, you know, the world record, older, I mean, you know, when you're going head and head against aged horses and you're racing as a four-year-old, a five-year-old, I mean, that's a lot different. You know, Cam Fellow is another one. Um, he was an outstanding three-year-old, but then, you know, he kept racing and... He, um, you know, it, it's hard to really stamp yourself as a great horse if you only race, you know, a restricted, you know, amount of times. Like, so Confederate, you know, he's going to retire with 22 lifetime starts. 
Now, there have been three-year-olds like Naya Trust and Naya Later that retired after the three-year-old season, but they, they had a lot of starts, 37, 38 starts. So, hey, look, that's what they want to do. They want to go into breeding, and that's what, you know, that's what people do nowadays. Years ago, I guess the rich people felt they were rich enough, and they raced their horses. That's what they were in it for. They, they didn't really buy the horses to get rich. They were already more rich. So they wanted the fun of watching their horse race, and then they wanted their horse to go down in history, you know, as a, as a great horse. Now, obviously, if you stop with them, then you stop them from becoming a great horse. So Confederate, look, he's a great three-year-old. I My guess is that if he kept racing, he would develop into a horse like an alley walk handler at the very, you know, the very least, maybe even more, maybe even better. You know, maybe even, you know, maybe he would have broken Bulldog Hanover's track record. You know, you don't know because not that many horses are going to be like a Bulldog Hanover at three-year-old, three years old. You know, like Naya Tross and Naya Later and Cam Fell, those horses were, you know, exceptional. I mean, they were, you know, you're talking about in, in an elite class, you know, the top, they're in the top 10 horses of all time. Um, you know, they were like machines. But most horses are going to, are not going to hit that spot as, as three-year-olds. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to hit like a Bulldog hand over 145 and four as a three-year-old. I mean, it's asking a lot. I mean, but, you know, Confederate might have been able to do something like that as a four-year-old or a five-year-old, you know. Um, I, I probably would have kept developing, you know, in my opinion. You don't know for sure. But, uh, but hey, he was, he was a terrific colt, and he, you know, he, it was fun watching him while it lasted. Um, but this was, you know, and this was a really good race. And, and you know, Ali Wagenov, I always liked the horse. You know, he's a little inconsistent this year, but it was interesting, too, that Brett Pelling, you know, trained both Confederate and Ali Wagenov, and he had, you know, he got the win here. A lot of times it comes down to trip. He got the trip. You know, he got to lead in 27.01. It didn't take too much out of him, and he's got the perfect trip. Really great drive by Todd McCarthy. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Yes, three-year-olds can beat older horses, but it depends. You know, it's all depends. It's all situational. In this particular case, Confederate, you know, not only drew an out, a tough post, but, I mean, he was stepping, you know, up in class considerably here compared to the three-year-olds. But anyway, um, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching. Lots of luck, and see you next time.